Welcome to The Unemployed Journeyman with AS Monaco in France, in Ligue 1. And this is going to be an end of season review and a transfer special where we need to bring players in, we need to let players go, hopefully for good money, and we need to fix our homegrown quota as well, while also trying to make sure we get closer to being able to challenge PSG for the league title. Let's see what we can do. <music> Right, welcome to the video folks. We start here on the squad screen because as I said in the intro we need to improve our homegrown quota because we need four players trained at club and four players trained in nation. Now obviously here we've got what five players that are trained in club at the moment so in theory we only need three players that are trained in nation because it's eight players overall and when I look at the list Julio Cesar Gutierrez He's a 17-year-old Argentine player for us, attacking midfielder. We're training him to be an inside forward out on the right-hand side. Basically, as someone that I think could potentially be a decent squad player. And he's in the squad for this season. We're going to give him a go. He's one and a half star current ability with three to four star potential. He's got 17 for determination, so there's every possibility that he could actually turn out to be that really good squad player. If we can get someone that's two and a half to three stars and is a good match in the comparison charts to the likes of Vanderson and Navarro and players like that, then obviously he would eventually take that place. The good thing about him as well is because he's only 17 years old, he's not going to kick up much of a fuss if we end up not registering him in Europe. But when you look at what else we have as an option, Amal Bora plays out wide on the right or the left. Two-star current ability with two-and-a-half-star potential. He's a decent backup option at a push kind of thing. Can play both sides, which gives him a little bit more of a an oomph than some of the other players, I suppose. And yeah, I, I'm inclined to probably keep him around. Although Dorian, Dorian Kors, one and a half star current with probably only one and a half star, maybe two and a half star potential. He's not likely to make it here. He did play for us last season. He made five appearances in the league, three as a start, two from the bench. Got a goal and assist, to be fair to him. 7.25 average rating. He didn't actually do too badly, but I just don't think he's really the player that we're going to need. That's probably one trained at club player we, we can probably do without, and that obviously then minimises what we've got at the moment. Then Erwin Adols is trained at Nation. He's a central defender, two and a half star, kind of a three-star three potential. Again, he's, he's a decent backup option um, for, for cent central defence. He's got good natural fitness. He's, he's got decent tackling and marking and heading without anything being exceptional. And if we do sell him, he's only likely to get us a couple of million anyway. So there's not really much of a motivation to sell him. Outside of that, pretty much anyone is for sale. It, except Erez Levi, of course, our wonder kid striker. If we actually look at who we do actually have, Jao Munez does want to be sold and he is wanted by a whole host of clubs. Brentford, Leon, Rangers, Raul Hispalis, Sevilla, Al Arabi, all want him. We could pick up close to 10 million for him, 9.6 million. So that would be a nice little amount of money to have go into our transfer kitty. And like I say, pretty much anybody else is for sale. There is the odd one or two that obviously won't be. One player I was hoping to move on this summer that I might have problems doing is Chow Enrique. He's injured and out for up to two to four months. So if it's only two months, he'll be back for the end of July, beginning of August time. We can still move him out before the end of the transfer window. If, however, it is closer to four months, then we might need to look at moving him on in January. He's 32 years old. He's a very decent player. I mean, he is very, very good in my opinion. And I don't really want to lose him, but we are kind of getting that position covered. If we have a look at what he done last season, 30 appearances, three goals, two assists, three player and match awards, 6.98, four an attacking fullback. He was really good. And he had that wonder goal as well that I showed on repeat, the direct free kick that went in. But yeah, so the aim is we're going to bring in some homegrown in-nation players. Now, if we have a look at transfers and what we have coming in we have kind of made an attempt though we've got Antoine Marie who is our star signing really he's coming in for 50 million pound from FC Nantes and 50 million pound on what is 
potentially only going to be a backup goalkeeper. He will eventually overtake for Bruggen and be a number one. I just need to make the decision, do I want to put the wonder kid in goal from the start and upset for Bruggen to the point where I'm going to have to move him on. If we compare him with the Bruggen, look at the comparison chart. The comparison chart shows that the Bruggen is easily the better goalkeeper at the moment. They're the same for shot stopping and Marie has slightly better physicals and slightly better mentals. But other than that, Verbruggen has the better distribution, better aerially. He's more eccentric, which you need for a sweeper keeper. He has better communication and he's quicker as well. He's also an inch taller than Antoine Marie. If we have a look at it this way round from the absolute side, and this, this is kind of the one that I do tend to go by because you get a better view of it from here. In terms of the goalkeeping attributes, Verbruggen is on, it averages 13, whereas Marie averages 11. For mentals, Verbruggen averages 12, Marie averages 11. And for physicals, Verbruggen averages 13, Marie averages 12. So he is all round the better goalkeeper. But as you can imagine, at the age of 27, compared to 18, he is more of the finished article. So the way I'm kind of looking at it at the moment is that Verbruggen will be our main goalkeeper for the league. And Antoine Marie will get the Champions League and the French Cup games. We're also now also so, so just going back to him as well. If we have a look at his eligibility, he is homegrown in nation, so we have no problems with that. That adds add is that adds another homegrown in nation to our numbers. He's obviously not homegrown at club, but that's fine. Then we have Giancomo Carnavalli, who is an Italian. He's joining us as well for 20 million. He's been at AS Roma. He had a breakthrough season last season, 35 appearances, six assists, two player of the match was at 6.84. He's 18 years old. He's left back, can play as a right back as well to pretty much the same kind of standard. On the left hand side, I think he's going to be our attacker. No, he's our support on the left hand side. So if we just nominate that as support, He's three stars at the age of 18. He's another wonder kid, going to be four to four and a half star potential. 20 for determination, 18 balance, 16 stamina, 16 for teamwork. He is looking really, really good already. Only aged 18. He's basically going to be my first choice left back. Then we've got Giannis Katagas coming in on a free transfer. You know I love a free transfer bargain. He can play out on the right. He can play in central defence. He can do a little bit out on the left as well. He's basically just another backup support option, really. So when we look at it, we've got three players coming into a squad that is currently 25 strong. We hope to be moving on uh, Jal Munoz, so that would take it down to 24. On top of that, Dorian Cause will probably end up moving back to the second team. So that'll take it down to 23. Add the three, that's 26. Gutierrez can potentially not be included in our European squad, which then brings us down to a 25 man squad. But we would have what, one, two, three, four, five, six with Marie, only six trained home homegrown trained players so we do need to move in a couple more players on and the players that we bring in do need to be homegrown in nation as an absolute minimum so yeah we've got a bit of work to do on the plus side we currently have 66.7 million pound in the transfer budget and if we go to the scouting screen we can see we've got 251,000 pound in the wage budget to play around with as well so we have options. If we go to our inbox, we've got all of this that's just come through at the end of the season, the current vision. They want to be competitive in the Champions League. They want us to qualify for the UEFA Champions League and they want us to win a domestic cup. Oh, my word. They want us to win a domestic cup next... We only have one domestic cup and that's the French Cup. Oh, wow, OK. Increased commercial revenue, they're disappointed. I mean... We are slightly disappointed with the lack of commercial income brought to the club. That's not really my problem. I don't really know how 
you expect me to do anything about the commercial revenue, but okay, fair enough. We'll accept the current vision, that's done. Squad dynamics update, the dressing room atmosphere is very good, manual support is good. Enrique is one of our team leaders, so it could upset players when we move him on, if we move him on. Just have a quick scout through here. Abel Ruiz was out for three months with an injury. Daniel Mahia was out for two months. Gar Christian Garcia, two months as well. Yeah, we, we had some injuries, but you, you get them every year, don't you? There's no point we keep moaning about them. Vanderson, oh, okay. So he's considering his option at the end, considering his options at the end of his contract. So we're going to have to sell him. We're going to have to sell him. He's worth 50 to 60 million. And I don't particularly want him to go for free. He's out of contract at the end of this coming season. So he's a player that, if we ask the agent about generating interest, I know you want to move Vanderson on, but he isn't keen on having his name circulated in this fashion, so I can't help. I don't care if he's keen or not. He's considering his options. Will an intermediary help? No, but we can set him a 30-day deadline. Right, we'll leave it at that because I don't want to massively upset the guy at the moment, but let's discuss with Vanderson. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to explore my options when my contract expires. Okay. I mean... I'm not going to try and talk him out of it. He weren't overly great for us last season anyway. Barbosa heading for a ball, that's fine. Fine, fine, fine. Let's move on from all of this. He's definitely considering his options now. Right, OK, let's move forward to the end of season review and then we'll get into transfers after that. OK, not sure if this is my, my game bugging out or something, but this looks like an odd start screen for the end of season review. Actually, no trophies on there, wasn't, didn't win anything, but we, we have had a good season, though. Right, let's get into it. So, the new arrivals, Erez Levi has been announced as our star signing. I will not disagree with that. £3 million from Maccabi Tel Aviv, 27 appearances, 24 goals, 2 assists, 7.32. I love this boy, you know I do. Um, someone said in the comments recently that when we signed him, he can either go on to be a superstar or we can sell him on and make a big profit on him. Andre Santos, I loved his side as well. 29 million from Vasco da Gama. 48 appearances, 13 goals, 5 assists at 7.14. That is worthy of being signing of the season in itself, really. Mateus Fernandez from Sporting Lisbon came in as a squad backup player. 1.1 million. Three starts, 10 sub appearances, one goal, three assists at 7.03. He's done decent. Abel Ruiz from Braga for 34 million. 38 appearances, 30 of those starts, 11 goals, 8 assists at 7.02. Imagine how well he could have done if he weren't out for a couple of months injured as well. But for Bruggen, I think it's been very, very good for us in goal. Previously at Brighton, went to FC Lorient, came in to us for 22 million, 45 appearances, obviously didn't score or assist, 6.92 average rating, very decent for a goalkeeper. Nahul Cordoba, 19-year-old once kid coming from Arsenal of Argentina or somewhere, I think that is. 14 starts, 13 sub-appearances, 3 goals, 4 assists at 6.90. I think he's had a very decent first season for us. And in actual fact, I've kind of got my eye on him being Vanderson's replacement in the squad. Then Erwin Adols has come in from FC Mets for 3.5 million. He was a backup player. He's been a backup player. He's not scored any goals, but he's got a 6.86 out of the 12 appearances that he's made. And Killian Sardella, again, another backup option. 23.5 million he's come in for. He's got an assist. He's made 26 appearances, eight of those from the start, at 6.86 as well. So, yeah, I don't think there's been a single dud out of any of our signings for last season. In terms of transfers out, let's see who's gone on and had a good season. Brill and Barlow... Imbolo, sorry, has gone to Saudi Arabia for 13.25 million. 16 goals, three assists, a 7.46. He's enjoying life in Saudi Arabia, let's be honest. Gustav Isaacson, who I really would have liked to have kept him because he, he is a decent player. Five goals, three assists from 24 appearances at 7.36 for Al Weda. Don't know. Then Al Tai, I've got Alexander Golovin. Never really done a great deal with us. He was a bit of a disappointment, but he's 33 years old. 12.75 million, 26 goals, 7 assists, uh, seven goals, 2 assists at 7.35. A lot of these players have gone on to have really decent times. Winifred Singo, I really didn't want to let go. I really like him. But he went to Arsenal, 57 million. He's only made 10 appearances, 4 of those from the start. He has got an assist, 7.27. And yeah, 
I mean, we, we got a lot of players went out last season, didn't they? Let's be honest. And a lot of them are doing fairly well for themselves. So I'm quite happy with all of that. We move on to the season's results. In the Ligue 1 Uber Eats, the objective was to qualify for the Champions League. We finished third. We qualified two points behind Nice, who were second, our biggest local rivals, and a long way away from PSG, 18 points away from an invincible PSG that only dropped points in four games all season. Trying to overcome them could well be mission impossible. But yeah, we finished third. C+, plus, they're quite happy. Erez Levi, who only joined us in January, is our top goal scorer in the league. In the Europa League, we got to the semi-finals of the Europa League. We were beaten in both legs by Brighton and Hove Albion. Brighton did actually go on and win the Europa League. They beat Lazio, I think it was 3-0 in the final. But yeah, we had a decent run in that. Played some OK teams. I mean, the Europa League is kind of the competition that you look to want to win, really. So I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't win it, but can't really complain too much. In terms of the French Cup, knocked out in the 11th round by Nice. We did beat Lyon. We did beat this non-league team. But yeah, that's a disappointment in that competition, to be fair. Then in the moments to remember, the biggest win was a 5-1 win against Auxerre. That was like game one or game, no, I think it was game two of the season. Um, but yeah, 5-1 win there. A 4-0 win against Havre AC was a match to remember. And the goal of the season was Chow Enrique. Uh, showed his class by scoring a thump it. So there you go. The goal that I've remembered from all of last season. That is indeed our goal of the season. And I am thrilled that that is the case. Right, in terms of finances, four-star reputation, Continental, still four-star Continental reputation. No new sponsorship deals have come in, but our sponsorship has gone up by just over 3 million. Our broadcast revenue has gone down by like nearly 10 million. It's 8, 8 million, I think. Corporate and hospitality has gone up slightly. Competition prize money has gone down. So this will probably all be because we're not in the Champions League last season. So expect to see that go up significantly for this coming season. Match day commercial and retail. I mean, they want the commercial side of things to improve. We've improved the match day commercial revenue. So... What more do they want from me, I ask you? Right, 20.55 million made in merchandise sales. 34,636 shirts are sold. The biggest shirts have been sold for Musa, Vanderson, Abel Ruiz, Andre Santos and Garcia. By next season, I want to see Levi on there. Vanderson hopefully won't be on there because he'd have been sold by then. And yeah, hopefully we see Levi on there. I'd like, I'd like that a lot. How we lined up in terms of our... Best 11, Verbruggen in goal, Enrique and Espinosa out wide, with Vandenberg and Barracina in the middle, Andre Santos, Puxtas and Musa in the centre of midfield, Abel Ruiz and Vanderson out wide with Levi up top. Very close to having all of our best 11 having a, a rating of 7 and upwards. I very rare I actually achieved that, but we did come very close. And yeah, I'd pretty much agree with that team as well. In terms of the accolades, record breakers, most assists by a player in a season, Brian Espinosa with 16 assists as our attacking um, right back, only 22 years old as well. Most clean sheets by a player in a season, Bart Verbruggen with 19 clean sheets. Fans player of the season was Brian Espinosa with a 7.2 average rating. Young player of the season was Brian Espinosa as well. Sign of the season, Erez Levi. Goal of the season, Chow Enrique. Top goal scorer is Erez Levi. Most assists, Brian Espinosa, as we know. And as we scroll down, we've got most player of the match awards, Erez Levi with five. Highest average rating was Erez Levi with 7.3. And most passes completed per 90 minutes, Hugo Barracina, 73 passes per 90 minutes. Very nice. And I won no awards because I'm not good enough. Sad. Anyway, history in the making. AS Monaco flew out of the traps and set themselves up well. That spell of football at the start of the season was the making of AS Monaco it really set them up for survival. Yeah, the way we finished the season was very disappointing. There is the manager timeline. Having another look through our emails now. This is the team of the week. I thought it was the best 11, but it's not as the team of the week. Having just a quick look through these. Hopes to sell player. We will sell him indeed. Let's see if we can offer him out to anybody. Yep, his agent's 
prepared to do some business, so let's see what he comes up with. Like I say, you've got pre- plenty of clubs who are interested. I'd rather not sell him to another league and club, um, but I don't really care. Dory Vallet, who is he? He's a 16 year old that wants to go out on loan. Well, let's, let's offer him via the transfer room on loan. We'll put on their regular starter because he is one of our youngsters. We want him to get some game time, otherwise, there's no point in going out on loan. Place them on the loan list. There you go. Then quickly scrolling through these, Bart Verbruggen resumes full training. We've received 3.72 million for the Europa League television money. Wow. And 2.3 million from the coefficient pool. Our best 11. So we've got Enrique. Singo's in there as a left, left-sided left central defender. Okay. Salisu, Vanson's a right back. with Mbolo. Wide right, Golovin, Fafana, Musa, Navarro and Balogun. That will change as the seasons go on. I don't know how long we're going to be here, whether that's going to make much of a difference. We don't need to view the end of season review. We've already seen it. And yeah, that is that. Right, let's fast forward on a little bit further because I don't want this video going on for like an hour or anything. So we're going to move on potentially to the 1st of July when the new season kicks over and have a look at our three new players that are coming back, coming in. And we might have some transfer news as well. Okay, so it's not the 1st of July, it's the 11th of June, but we're having some transfer offers coming and we're having some things moving, shall we say. So Bart Verbruggen has had a transfer offer coming from Manchester United. He has a value of up to 28 million and they've offered in a potential value of 37 million. So it's 23 and a half million up front with three monthly instalments, three 12 monthly instalments, sorry, to the value of 5.25 million each. And then after 50 games, another 8 million. They've locked that in, it's non negotiable. Now, when I look at Verbruggen, he is wanted by Manchester United and Liverpool. Now, it is early in the transfer window. And Verbruggen would rather go to Liverpool than Manchester United. So I'm actually going to reject this offer of, 30, of potentially up to 37 million. And let's wait and see if anybody else like Liverpool come in for him. If we can get a bit more money for him, then I would be absolutely delighted with that. Vanderson has come to us and said that he wants to be put on the transfer list. And um, because he feels he's outgrown the club. Newcastle are being pathetic. He's on the transfer list for 55 million and they've come with an offer of 15 or sorry 16.75 million with only 7.75 million up front. So that will clearly be um, rejected. He'd rather go to Lorient anyway. I'm not accepting 11.75 million for an offer for Vanderson. I'm really sorry I'm not. He is in the last year of his contract as I said so I might not get the 55 million that I want, but I'm pretty certain we can do a bit better than that. If we go to the transfer screen, go to the transfer history, we're still on last season's transfers, but our left back, Carnavalli, the Italian, he has now moved in. Three star, currently really five star potential, looking really, really good. And Antoine Marie, our current backup goalkeeper, potentially first choice backup goalkeeper. I mean, it has a value of nearly 100 million. I can't believe I'm contemplating leaving a hundred million pound goalkeeper on the bench, but that is currently where we stand. So that's it in terms of the players that have come in there, the ones you already knew about anyway. Jal Muniz has gone to Brentford for 9.5 million. That is a player that has left. So we had 9.5 million come in. We spent this money here. If we look at future transfers as well, we obviously have Katagas coming in, which you know about. We've also got Maxime Esteve that's coming in. I say on a three transfer, it's actually, we're doing a signing on fee of 3.2 million. He's homegrown at, in nation for France. He's been playing for Liverpool. I say playing kind of in the loosest sense of the word. He's not really played a great deal for them. He started off at Montpellier, went on loan to Burnley, done a bit there. Then he came back to Montpellier, had a reasonable season with them, then went to Liverpool for 41 million and has made, what, 12, 16, 25 league appearances, no goals, one assist, and his average rate is going to be around 6.7, I would imagine. He did spend a season on loan at Leeds where he had a very good season 
and Liverpool obviously thought they could do something with him last season, but they didn't. When I look at his attributes, he looks really decent. He's six foot four, 16 for jumping reach, 14 for heading. He's a left footed, ball playing defender, can play at wide centre back. We'll get to that in a moment, that is important. 16 for strength, 17 for pace with 14 acceleration, 16 for jumping reach, 16 anticipation, 16 for marking. He's got all the attributes to be a really, really good player. And then if we go to this part of the transfer, we have put in an offer for Desire Doué. Probably not how you pronounce it, but and I'm looking at him coming in as our advanced playmaker, can also play the Mazala. 17 for dribbling, 16 for first touch, 17 for passing, 16 for technique, 16 for flair, 17 for agility. He is a very decent player. His physicals are very, very solid. And I'm really looking forward to him coming in and joining us, hopefully. If we have a look at the tactic, I am currently training a new tactic. It's a 5-2-1-2 defensive midfield, attacking midfield, tiki-taka. And... This is kind of how, well, this is how we would look up or line up as we stand at the moment. I was trying to get a formation where we get two strikers in because I want to see if we can get Garcia and Levi in the same team. This is not necessarily the team or the formation I'm going to start the new season with. But we were training a diamond with two up top, obviously. But I just thought I'd go with this. I've never done a three at the back uh, formation before. And we'd obviously have a goalkeeper, we'd have a wide centre-back on the left, a ball-playing defender on the right, with a central defender on cover in the centre. Then we'd have Carnavalli out on the left as a wing-back, Espinosa as a, on the right side as a wing-back, with Fafana and Santos sitting in here. We then have Cordoba in the attacking playmaker role, with Garcia as an advanced forward and Levi as a complete forward. With the players we've got coming in, Esteve would move in here and Desire do a would most likely come into that position as well. So, yeah, I'm I'm kind of liking the way this is looking at the moment, and it's getting the best out of the likes of Santos and Espinosa. It enables us to play Garcia and Levi up top, and there is a potential that Abel Ruiz could be leaving as well as Vanderson. So it's kind of bearing this in mind, in case we lose uh, two of our wide men, this might be a formation we end up going with. But we'll probably end up still playing our usual formation that we had from last season. But th this is just something that I want to just see how we look with it. If we bring Antoine Marie up in goal instead of Bart Verbruggen, that drops him down to two and a half star. He would prefer to be defend or a goalkeeper on defend. He's going to have to change his ways, I'm afraid. But at the moment, it is still Bart Verbruggen that's up there. So, yeah, that's all the news there is to bring you at the moment. And I'll see you again when I've got some more for you. Oh, this is turned into a crazy transfer window. Right, let's have a look. We have had some business coming in. Bart Verbruggen has left for Liverpool for 30 million, rising to 40 million. We have bought in Des Desiree Dewey, something like that, from Rennes for 22 million, rising to 28 million. That's as well as Carnavalli and Antoine Marie. That is not it because we have now ticked over to the new season but in last season's transfer activity 198 million pound I've spent and I've bought in 206 million this has just been crazy it really has in terms of transfers in Vanderson has gone to Villarreal or transfers in and out Vanderson has gone to Villarreal for 20 million raising to 25 million Alexander Bobek our other goalkeeper has gone to Al Faisali for 4.7 million he was on £19,750,000 a week. We've sold him for £4.7 million. His replacement, Justin Bengui Jao from Lyon for £3 million. He's on £18,250,000 a week, so we're paying less wages for him. He's exactly the same as star rating. He's very decent with his goalkeeping attributes. He could do with some work in some other areas, but he is literally a backup goalkeeper and his homegrown in nation, which is lovely. And it's one reason why I decided to sell Bobek and bring in a homegrown in nation replacement. Katagas and Estevi have now gone through. Estevi, I'm not sure if I've properly shown you him, but he looks very nice, very lovely, doesn't he? Star player in his prime years, 28 years old. Strength is 16, 17 for pace, 16 for jumping reach, 
14 for heading, 16 marking, 12 passing, 14 tackling, 6 foot 4. He is going to be a lovely, lovely left-footed centre-back. He does want to be first choice, but I'm not sure he's actually going to be, to be quite honest. Although, if we have a look at our squad now, we bring him up into our goalkeeping position. Estevé, at least for now, can come into here. And we... Where's... Didn't we have somebody else? Katagas, or have I already got him in the... Where's he gone? Where's Katagas gone? Giannis Katagas. Oh, he's in our AS2 team. Joe, you know what? I might actually leave him there for now. Because defensively, we actually do not really need him. We are quite well off with defenders, as well as Espinosa, Vandenberg, Barracina, Carnavalli, that are pretty much our first choice defence. We've also got Sardella that can play right, centre or left. We've got Esteve that can play in the centre or on the left-hand side. Going further down, we've also got Adul's that can play in the centre. And yeah, I don't think we really need... We might bring him in if I feel we do need him. But if we have a look at our squad now, look at all these homegrown players we've got. Bearing in mind, Dorian Kors will probably put him into the second team now and just... I have not just done what I think I've done, have I? Oh, God, I have. I've moved everyone into the second team. Oh, no. Right, I'll be back in a minute. I need to sort out the team because it's going to damage morale as well. Right, everyone's been moved back. Oh, that was a disaster. I, I do that quite often. I'll have them all highlighted. I'll go to move one. It ends up moving everybody. Right, getting on with things. So, yeah, we've now we've got Dorian Kors taken out. Everybody's born, been brought back in. By the way, this is everybody wanted to discuss personal matters as a result of what I just did. So, yeah, we've got everyone back in. So we've got Gutierrez, Espinosa, Kalala, Bora are trained at club. They will all have to be included in a European squad. So, yeah, we could do with having somebody else trained in squads to maybe take out um, Bora. Maybe, no, I don't want really to take out Kalala, but Bora, yeah, he'll do for now. But then on top of that, we've also got Adouls, Marie, Doué, Jao, Estevé and Fafana that are all trained in nations. We actually have six players trained in nations. That's 10 players in total, if we actually look at our dev centre and have a look at our second team, we've got some really decent players. Obviously, we've got Katagas um, that we could bring in, but he's not homegrown anyway, so I'm not too fussed about him. Bringing him in, he was a free transfer. I'm not too worried if he ends up not working out. But we do have the likes of Usman Keita, who is a four-star potential player, three to four-star potential winger. He's got a bit of work to do. He's 19 years old, so he's not likely to make it. But Xavier Billy as well as a potential four-star striker. Dorian Kors is obviously in there as well. This guy here, Martin Cordozo, he has been getting a lot of attention from our second team emails type of thing. He's a centre-back. He's only five foot eleven, but he has been getting a lot of attention. Like I say, if we look at the information, he's on his way to being homegrown at club and homegrown at Nation. And in fact, by this time next season, he will be homegrown at in, at club so he is definitely someone that I will most definitely be keeping a very close eye on if we have a look at our schedule we've got the fixture list in for the new season we've got our friendlies lined up we've got Liverpool in a Alexander Arnold testimonial he's 31 years old he's having a testimonial at Liverpool fair play to him we're then playing Clermont Cercel Bruges Slaven Belupo Strasbourg in Fafana's testimonial Maraganan Ajaccio and Torino. The Torino one I might actually cancel because that's like five days before a friendly against uh, the opening game of the season against Nice. So if we do keep the Torino one, it'll only be the backup team that plays in there anyway. The start to the season, our first five games is very, very tough. Nice, who finished second last season at home, our local rivals, their fierce rivals, that is going to be challenging. Then Orcs there again as their second team. We had them last season. Then we've got Saint Etienne. Then we've got PSG at home, followed by Lons away. So a pretty tough start to the season having Lons, PSG and Nice as three of their first five games. The bonus, I suppose, is that Nice and PSG are both at home. But tomorrow's episode, we will get a proper test of what this new look team is going to be like. If we go to our tactics screen at the moment, we're back to our normal 4-3-3 here. 
this is kind of how we're looking with Marie in goal, Carnavalli left back, Espinosa right back, Barashina and Vandenberg in the centre of defence, Santos, Musa and Dewey in the centre of midfield, Abel Ruiz and Cordoba out wide with Levi up top. Our actual squad itself, if we click on them, it is a 25-man squad and I kind of feel we probably still need to move on some players because their backups to Ruiz and Cordoba is literally Navarro, uh, where, where have I gone? Kalala and Bora, wherever he's disappeared. There you go, and Bora. They are literally our, our replacement. So if we get injuries out wide, Navarro, I'm fine with, even though he's in the last year of his contract, so we could be moving him on as well. But Outside of that, Kalala and Bora, I'm not overly convinced by. And if they weren't homegrown, they wouldn't be in the club. But when I look at them, they're both homegrown at clubs. I can't really afford to get rid of them either. So Navarro, being in the last year of his contract, potential value there. Do we see if we can... Uh, I've got to discuss a new contract. Market interest is going to say there is none. Will an intermediary come in? Oh, there you go. We've got an intermediary offer, so we'll take this one for this afternoon so we might be moving on Navarro and again in terms of his replacement I want someone that can play left and right but also someone that is homegrown in nation as well potentially but I don't know we we'll see we've got plenty of money to spend we've got 112 million pounds in the transfer budget we've got 160 odd million I think it is in the wage budget 176 million in the wage budget and the problem we've got is the ability to spend it because we are in a position where it's one goes out for one to come in and when we look at our tactic it will have to be the likes of a Puxtus goes out or a Navarro goes out or Mateus Fernandez goes out Mejia there has been a little bit of interest in him as well no solid offers yet but there has been interest so yeah I mean Chow Enrique is a player we also do want to move on as well He's still out in, it says, for four weeks to two months, so it could still be after the transfer window closes. But yeah, there's plenty more work to do, and we'll come back when I've got some more news for you on anyone going in or coming out. Right, I've had to go to bed and finish this off the next day because this has been insane, this transfer window. Here we are on the um, competition season preview page. We are currently expected to finish third, 20 to 1 to win the league. Nice are comfortably above us still, 10 to 1, with Lorient in fourth. We have kind of switched to and fro with Lorient. One minute we were third, then they were third, then we were back to third. And I think it's about the third time this has changed. Uh, Marseille fifth, Rennes sixth, Lyon seventh, Lille eighth, and blah, 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 all the way down. Bearing in mind, in our fixtures that we've got, Nice, who are expected to finish second, PSG, who are expected to finish first, as two of her first five games then first five games there are some tough games in there we would fancy our chances against Auxerre and Saint Etienne but again look back at the season preview Auxerre expected to finish bottom Saint Etienne expected to finish fourth from bottom so a couple of nice games but obviously the two big big games in there right let's have a look at what matters most to you guys and let's have a look at the transfer history we'll go to this page first just in case you've forgotten or whatever or missed it or whatever. We did bring in Giacomo Carnavalli as a new first choice left back. I'm not going to go through him again, but he's 18 years old. Wonder kid. Absolutely love that. Antoine Marie as a first choice goalkeeper. Another wonder kid, 18 years old. And then finally, Desiree Dewey. I'm going to stick with that as a name, Desiree Dewey. I think that's right, but I'm probably wrong. 25 years old. French, not international, three and a half star, four star potential. He just looks a really good player. I really like the look of him. He's had a pretty decent pre-season, making five starts, three sub appearances, one goal, four assists at 7.39. We'll go through the pre-season friendly shortly. In terms of players that went out on this part of the season was Jal Muniz went to Brentford for nine and a half million and Bart Verbruggen going out to Liverpool for 30 million, rising to 40 million. That's why Antoine Marie is now a number one goalkeeper. And yeah, so for this part of the transfer window, we uh, we spent £92 million on new players. 
and we've brought in 39 and a half million pound on new players. You then move over to this side. We've spent another 110 million, bringing in another 73 million. I think in total, I've worked it out that we've we spent 202 million and bought in 112 million during the course of this summer transfer window. That is basically a crazy and insane 300 million pound plus transfer window. In terms of the players that have gone out, Vanderson has gone to Villarreal for 20 million, raising to 25. Alexander Bobek, uh, other backup goalkeeper that we had, has gone to Saudi Arabia for 4.7 million. Then we've had Rolly KMB, one of their youngsters. He's never going to make it. He's 19 years old, not really much about him. We was able to get 1 million for him with 1.4, uh, with it rising to 1.4. He's gone to Rems. Christian Garcia. Now, this is an interesting one because we've got a £2.1 million loan fee for him. He's gone out to Pumas in Argentina, I think that is. And it's on a two-season long loan. His loan expires in 30th of June, 2032. We're in August 2030. So it's a two-year long loan deal. They're covering £20,000 of his wages. And there's an optional future fee of £27 million if they wish to take it up. The reason why I've accepted this is because we had a real issue with our non EU based players. We had five of them. We had Espinosa, who's our first choice right back. We had Erez Levi and Nahul Cordoba, who you know who they are. Cordoba's a midfielder attacker. Levi's their number one choice striker. And also Andre Santos, who's one of their best midfielders, if not their best midfielder. And then obviously Christian Garcia. And I had to make a choice on which one of them left. So I went for Garcia. I have replaced him. But I've done it in a way as well where with it being on a two-year loan deal, if we decide that we want him back and they choose not to take the optional future fee, then we could bring him back and replace him with somebody else. So, yeah, kind of the future in mind for that as well. So £2.1 million loan fee for him. Abel Ruiz has gone to Al Itihad for £45 million, raising to £49.5 million. A player we brought in last season. He was 28, just about to be 29. He's now 30. 26 appearances for us. Nine goals, six assists, two player of the match awards at 7.08. He had a decent season in between injuries. But 45 million, that's a profit of 17 million on a player that's now 30 years old. I just thought that was a really good option to take that up. Dan Sinati has gone out on loan to Pau FC. Not really anything to speak about. Reme Carr, William and Lend and Martin Cordoza all going out on loan as well. Martin Cordoza is one of our three to four star potential young centre-backs. He's been doing well in pre-season for the second team and he's had a, a, he's had a little bit of time with us in the uh, senior team as well. So yeah, that's where the 73 million has come from. In terms of players coming in, Justin Bengui Jao, backup goalkeeper to Antoine Marie. Two and a half star. He's slightly better than Bobek was. We bought him for three million pounds, sold Bobek, Bobek for what did he go for in the end? 4.7 million. And he's also on a thousand pounds a week less wages. So that just seemed like a really good deal to do. Giannis Katagas, you already know about free transfer, can play on the right hand side and the middle. He's currently in our Monaco two team. We may move him over. He has got four star potential. He does look a really decent signing, actually. Then Maxim Esteve from Liverpool on a free transfer. Three and a half stars. Looking at his attributes, he looks very, very good. He can play as a ball-playing defender. He can do a central defender, wide centre-back. He can even be a libero if we want to get exotic about it all. But he's got 16 for marking, 16 jumping reach, 17 for pace, 16 for strength, 6 foot 4, 14 for head as well. His physicals are really, really good. And 28 years old. He just makes their defence a lot stronger. Whether he starts or not is another matter, but we're still stronger for it. Then Stéphane Rousseau from Leicester City for £40 million. We brought him in because of Abel Ruiz and Christian Garcia moving out. We needed some firepower. He plays predominantly on the right. He can play up the top. He's got finishing a 12, dribbling a 12, of 16, first touch of 15, 13 composure, 18 determination, 18 agility. He's got decent pace and acceleration as well. Technique is 17. He can play the advanced forward role, which is what we play. And he can play out here on the right-hand side as an inside forward, should we choose to do so. 
21 years old. Like I say, we got him in for £40 million and he now has a value of nearly £100 million. Then Oscar Sierra Sivertson has come in from Lyon for £52 million. And again, he looks really decent. His physicals are pretty decent. His strength does need improving. To be fair, it is improving. But 14 pace with 17 accelera uh, acceleration and 16 agility. He's got 17 for determination, 16 for flair, 16 for off the ball. He looks really good. And he's had a very decent pre-season as well. Six goals, five assists from seven pre-season appearances at an 8.62. Full disclosure, some of them games have been against pretty rubbish teams. But the 26-year-old Norwegian international, 13 caps with one goal for Norway. He looks, he looks decent. And he's kind of a finished article. We're not bringing in someone young for the future. We're bringing in someone that can make an impact now. Then Salvatore Rustignoli. For 15 million, potentially rising to 18.25 million. 21 year old Italian international, one cap, two goals. Looks really good. He's got a potential five star ability. And he's not described as a wonder kid or anything, but he does look really good. We're playing him on the left hand side and we're training him as a left hand side inside forward as well. Dribbling 16, bravery 16, agility 18, balance 17. Pace 16 with 15 acceleration, 16 stamina. His physicals are really, really good. And in case you've not heard me say it before, physicals are really important in FM24. He does have three negatives. I'm not sure what the negatives are. Recognises he has little standing within his social group. That's fine. Has no strong feelings about me. And devastated to have missed out on the Italy tournament squad. Well, never mind. I pay your wages. You're here to play for me. So there you go. There's the new signings we bring in. When we go to our tactics screen, this is probably going to be the team that starts the first game of the season against Nice tomorrow. Maxime Estevay, we are playing here at the moment. I am considering swapping him out for Sardella, who's got better crossing and whatever, which is probably what I will do, to be fair. So, yeah, that's probably, it's probably going to be Sardella playing there on the left-hand side. That's mainly because Carnavalli has got an injury. He returns to training tomorrow, so he should be fit and available for the game against Auxerre. <clears throat> Eunice Musa is also out injured for three more days. And Chow Enrique has got a couple more weeks until he's back from his um, four-month-long injury. So in terms of the midfield, we would normally play Musa here, but Cordoba will come in in his absence. Rustignoli, Sivertson, the two wide players with Levi in front of them. Marie obviously in goal. I think this looks a very good, a very decent team. Rustignoli, I'm sure, will improve the more he plays and the more he trains in that position as well. And yeah, we're looking really good in terms of dynamics. Team cohesion is good. Club atmosphere is very good. Managerial support is good as well. Finances, we've still got 64 million in the bank with about 70,000 left in the wage budget. So if we wanted to make another signing, we potentially could do so. And I am kind of at the stage where I might want to bring in another left back, but then I do realise that if we go into a second team, filter that one out, and go down to Katagas, we have actually got him in here. That I think, thinking about it now, we will actually move him over to the senior squad because otherwise I will make the decision to go out and buy another left-sided defender, and I really don't need to. So, yeah, he is in as well. We need to register him, I believe. So if we go to the squad screen, registration, is Katagas registered? No, he's not, so we need to get him registered. That's fine. We can now go back again, go to a tactics screen, and Katagas is now available to play. So, yeah... That is basically the whole of the transfer window. If we look at, again, go back to the finances, we've got 21 million in the bank. Money does tend to drop off here, but we do really decent. If you look at the projections, projections always look terrible. Most of the time they do. We've got 29.2 million pounds transfer debt, an overall debt of 245.9 million. They've taken out some loans. But this was long before I got here. But yeah, let's maybe not pay too much attention to that. Right, I'll be back tomorrow for the first two games of the season, which will be against Nice and Auxerre. In terms of pre-season friends, we haven't lost it. We drew one all with Liverpool. We beat Clement, Clement, sorry, 3-1. Cecil Bruges, 5-1.
Slaven Belupo 3 1, Strasbourg 5 2, Maragain 7 0, Adjacio 8 0. And then a really good pre season. Bear in mind, this is our second string side, our, our second 11. Got a one all draw away from home against Torino as well. So, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow for Nice at home and Auxerre at home in Ligue 1. Can we start the season? the way we want to, with two wins out of their first two games. Let me know in the comments what you think of this transfer window. Any players you like, any players you're disappointed that we've sold, anything like that. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I would love that a lot if you could. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next episode. Thank you very much. Bye.